In regards to black women not being protected, let me first state the obvious. No man should put his hands on a woman. We desire protection, but sometimes what we don't understand is that true protection comes with a level of control. Bodyguards are a good example. A bodyguard will make their client leave from a dangerous place. The bodyguard has to know all the details, who, what, when, where, why, and how. And the client has to listen to the bodyguard and follow the instruction that the bodyguard gives them. It's really an agreement between all parties involved. When the person who needs protecting does not follow the instruction and the direction of the protector, it puts the protector in a situation where they're more likely to lose their life. I have four brothers and a father, and I listen to their instruction even when they're not around. They have told me to stay away from certain places if I'm by myself or if it's late at night. They've also advised me not to be drunk or high in certain situations. Even though my brothers, my dad, and the men in my life protect me, I in turn protect them by listening to them and following their instruction. They don't have to come to my defense in some wild scenario because if I listened to them, I wouldn't have been there in the first place. And this is another thing I feel like is pertinent to say, and I know folks ain't gonna like this one. I don't have sons right now, but when I do have sons, I'm gonna teach them that there's a difference between diamonds and dirt and rubies and rocks. Rubies and diamonds are often in jewelry stores. They're in glass cases, they're secured, there's an alarm system. There's a lot of layers of protection because those things are valuable. But you could pull over to the side of the road and find some dirt and rocks. Expecting a man to risk his well-being, his future, and his life on someone who does not see value in themselves or the man is asinine. That's a very asinine thing to ask. All I'm saying is protection comes with a little bit of sacrifice. It comes with a little bit of control. And me personally, I feel that what I have to sacrifice and the amount of control I have to give up is 100% worth it to receive the protection that I've been getting my whole life. I am not about to protect somebody. I am not about to risk my life for somebody that's out there looking for trouble. I'm not saying what happened to her was right. I'm not, I, I, I condone violence. I'm not, I'm like, like I'm not saying it was right for the guy to hell with a brick, but all I'm saying is, I am not willing to risk my life for somebody that's out there looking for trouble. I have a daughter. I have a family that I got to go home to. He could have had a gun. Once again, like, I, I have a daughter. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Mac Jetson channel. Today, we have a shocking story to discuss that's been making headlines recently. A video has gone viral on social media showing a woman's terrifying encounter after she claimed she was hit in the face with a brick for refusing to share her phone number. This incident has sparked a heated debate about personal safety, bystander intervention, and gender dynamics in our society. Before we dive into this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update on important stories like this. Peace and Black Power. Welcome to the Mac Jetson channel. I am your humble host, Mac. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the show. In the video shared on social media from Robashi, the woman can be heard describing the harrowing incident. She said, y'all, this man just hit me in my face with a brick and all these black men just watched. This man grabbed a rock and hit me in my face because I wouldn't give him my number. Bash's distress and frustration are visible in the video as she implores the bystanders to step in and take action. Roe also says, I want you to be a man and do something. You gonna let a man hit me in my face? The next video shows Basha in the hospital, wearing a gown with a large swollen bump on the side of her face. She continues to express her shock and disbelief at the situation. Rose says, how is this okay? However, it's important to note that the videos posted on social media do not show the exact moment of the alleged altercation, and Newsweek cannot independently verify if Basha was indeed hit by a man with a brick. According to social media, the incident occurred in Houston, Texas. This incident has sparked a wide range of reactions from the community and on social media platforms. Some have expressed outrage, while others have raised important questions. This incident has sparked a crucial discussion about the need for unity within the black community and the importance of supporting and protecting each other. While it's essential for everyone to be safe and cautious in public spaces, 
This incident highlights the complexities of bystander intervention and the challenges faced by those who experience harassment. Now, let's dive deeper into the complex discussions that have arisen from this incident. It's crucial to address the broader issues of gender dynamics, community responsibility, and unity within the black community. The incident raises questions about the roles of black men and women in protecting and supporting each other within the community. While it's important to recognize that black men traditionally carry the expectation of being protectors and providers, it's equally vital to understand the challenges they face when trying to fulfill these roles. It's undeniable that the safety and well-being of black women are paramount. However, the idea that black men can't protect black women if they engage in confrontations is a point of contention. We must emphasize that personal safety should always come first, and confronting potentially dangerous situations should be handled cautiously. This incident has ignited debates about when and how to intervene, and it's a reminder that there's no one-size-fits-all answer. While it's essential for black men to step up and protect the community, personal safety should never be compromised in the process. The incident has also triggered discussions about unity within the black community. Some argue that divisions are emerging, particularly in the context of the black diaspora and diaspora wars. This divisive approach doesn't align with the principles of pan-Africanism, which seeks to unify people of African descent worldwide. It's crucial to remember that unity doesn't mean suppressing individual voices or opinions. Instead, unity should be grounded in respect, empathy, and a shared commitment to addressing systemic issues that affect the black community as a whole. To move forward, we need to embrace a Queen Latifah UNITY philosophy, as opposed to a see murder F them other ninjas cause I'm down for my ninjas philosophy, which is a philosophy of division. The Queen Latifah UNITY philosophy means recognizing that each member of the black community brings their unique perspective and experiences to the table. We should celebrate diversity within the community and use it as a strength rather than a source of division. The famous rapper and actress Queen Latifah has always advocated for unity and solidarity among black people. Her philosophy encourages us to stand together against the challenges we face as a community. In conclusion, let's refocus our energy on tackling systemic issues disproportionately affecting the black community with a special emphasis on protecting black women. Instead of engaging in infighting, we need to unite to confront the systems perpetuating inequality and injustice. Let's strive for unity, understanding, and a shared commitment to dismantling the structures of oppression that affect us all and ensuring the safety and well-being of black women in our community. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more thought-provoking discussions like this. Thank you for tuning in, and goodbye.